Hello everyone this is part 3 of what if Naruto told Hanata his secret, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Join my membership the perks are great, it's in the description. After reading the scroll from his brother, Sasuke returned to his training. Now that he was free of the cursed seal, he wanted to know exactly how strong he was. The words of the god I'm echoed through his head. Flashback. Sasuke, Sunit said to the surviving Uchiha, I know that you've been training these past years to become stronger, and then Naruto and Lee both were able to push you to the second level of the cursed seal. I know that this doesn't make any sense, but I'm pretty sure, that you're on par with, if not slightly above Lee. When you were using the seal, it seemed like you had infinite amounts of chakra, but instead you were receiving the same amount that you were receiving when you first got it. The seal didn't grow in strength with you, and when you used it, you actually were limited to the power of the seal. So when you fought Naruto you were actually weaker than you probably should have been. End flashback. Sasuke did indeed find that piece of information interesting. So he poured himself into the training he was allowed to do in his suspended status. This mostly was limited to taijutsu and chakra control, but he found that Sunit's words rung true. He was stronger without the seal, than with it. The only thing it gave him was a small boost in speed, which he was quickly able to replicate with a combination of weights and chakra. As he became more engrossed in his workout, he began to replay the conversations he had with his old friends. Flashback. Sasuke hated the silence that permeated the room. For the first time that he could remember, and he could remember quite a bit, Sakura wasn't talking to him. She wasn't pestering him for a date, or asking about his different preferences, or anything. She was just sitting in his kitchen, across the table from him, not saying anything. Once or twice she had opened her mouth, only to close it a second later without speaking. He thought it might be better if he spoke first. Sakura, I'm sorry. For that night, when I knocked you out. I don't really know what happened to me. He was looking for something else to say to show his sorrow for his past atrocities, but Sakura interrupted his thought process. It's okay, Sasuke, I forgave you a long time ago. I heard that the seal was doing something to you, so I can't really hold that against you. She stated, before falling silent again. Once again, an awkward silence filled the room as the two teenagers sat across from each other, not saying a word. End flashback. Eventually the conversation grew lighter, covering topics from the village to Sakura's training and her relationship with Lee. By the end of the conversation she had informed him that she would consider him a friend again. When he asked if she thought the others would react negatively she gave an answer much like Naruto's. She calmly explained that if Naruto had forgiven him, then Hanata would too. After a while Neji would probably forgive him, although it would take a while. This would in turn lead to Lee and maybe Tenten forgiving him as well. The ones most likely to hold a grudge against him for his defection would probably be Kiba. Shikamaru, she joked, would find hatred, far too troublesome, and Chuji would probably mimic his friend. Hearing about the Ino Shika Cho members brought back more of Naruto's words. Hey, does Ino still have that crush on me? He asked, hoping that she didn't. He just couldn't stand her. Ino, no, actually she moved on rather quickly after you left. We all suspected that she was seeing Shikamaru, but she wasn't. It was quite the mystery for a while, but then we found out she had been dating Kankuro, Gara's brother, or should I say the Kazekage's brother. She stated. I'd heard that Gara became the Kazekage when they returned back, but Ino and Kankuro, wasn't he the one that wore makeup and had a hood with cat ears on it? Sasuke asked in a mocking manner. Hi, that's Kankuro. Actually, they didn't start seeing each other, until Temari started to date Shikamaru. Now that political relations are a little better between the two countries, Temari and Kankuro have become the sooner ambassadors to Kanoa. She finished. As he replayed the dialogue in his mind, Sasuke was overcome with a wave of happiness. He knew that hopefully in a little while, all the people he had hurt, either psychologically, or physically would forgive him. He just needed to work at it. He was also quite pleased with his reassessment of his skills. He figured he was probably an elite chunin, if not borderline junin. 
I may not be able to surpass you, Naruto, Sasuke thought, but there's no shame in being second best. X. Now, an exploding note does not require a lot of chakra to activate it, thus making it perfect for sneak attacks. The best notes are said to require nothing more than the will of the maker to activate. As such none of the shinobi in the village were aware that Naruto had just been rendered unconscious by an exploding note of high quality. While the chakra signature might be low, the explosion itself would have been heard by anyone living in the apartment complex. However, since, the demon, was living there, the only person who heard the explosion was the landlord. The old man held much against the Kyuubi, and it surprised many people when he agreed to the Sandime's request to house the boy. What most people don't know was that he charged the third Hokage an exorbitant amount of money for the shabby room, enough to recuperate his losses. If the grey-haired man had been anywhere else in the building, he wouldn't have caught up to the two Akatsuki members, leaving with the unconscious form of Uzumaki Naruto. Are you two going to K that brat? He asked to the backs of the figures. The two cloaked forms turned to survey the aging man. The boy will D when we are through with him. One said. HN. It's about time. Damn demon has caused enough trouble around here. Just make sure you get the job done. I'll keep that bee of a hockage off your trail for a while. The decrepit landlord said as he turned around and walked off. The two members just leapt away from the village quickly trying to make it back to the Akatsuki base. X. The next morning came to Kanoa bright and sunny. There wasn't anything wrong in the village, and everyone was happy. Except for Hanata. You see, Naruto was 20 minutes late for their morning practice, and Hanata was growing impatient. She had even activated her Byakugan attempting to catch an image of a blonde-haired shinobi running towards her. After another 20 minutes, Hanata grew quit irate about her boyfriend's tardiness. Since he isn't here, I'll go look for him. Maybe he got a mission. She thought. The first place she went to look was Ichiraku Ramen. She didn't see him, and moved on to her second choice of location. She took a leisurely walk through the village towards the training field where Team 7 first became Rookie Genin. This was a very special place for Naruto, and she thought he might be there. But alas, he wasn't there either. She retraced her steps and headed towards the Hokage's office. X. While Hanata was searching for Naruto, two other figures were searching for the loud ninja as well. Well, one was looking, the other was peeking at women while they bathed. Hitaki Kakashi was searching for Naruto on orders from the Hokage. The first place he looked was the training field where his former student and Hugo Hanata often practiced. Upon finding neither of teens present, he too went off in search of the blonde boy. Thinking along the same lines as Hanata he went to Ichiraku's. He didn't see the boy there, and continued towards the boy's apartment. When he got there, he noticed that the door was damaged, and that no one was in the apartment. He then proceeded to search out the landlord. Excuse me sir, but have you seen Uzumaki Naruto around recently? I'm to have him report to the Hokage immediately. He asked politely. No, Hitaki-san, I haven't seen the boy since yesterday afternoon. Lied the old man. Surprisingly, Kakashi couldn't get any kind of read on the old man. Did you know that his door was burned or damaged recently? Kakashi asked. No, although it doesn't surprise me, damn kid can't take care of his exploding notes, and damages my property. The man replied angrily, lying once again. Well, thank you for your time. Kakashi said as he left. Something just doesn't feel right. Naruto has never shown an interest in using explosive notes. Come to think of it, I'm not even sure he could afford it, if he did want to use them. As he walked through town again, he passed Ichiraku again. This time, he went inside and asked the owner if he had seen Naruto. Actually, I haven't seen him today, replied the owner. That actually worries me. He's been coming here non-stop since he returned. This is the first time, he missed any sort of a meal here. Now that was not good news. Kakashi knew that Naruto would have ramen if it K him. So the only possible explanation was that either Naruto was changing his eating habits, which was highly unlikely, or something had happened to him. Kakashi made a mad dash towards the Hokage's office. X. Shizun looked up from her desk when she felt someone enter the waiting room for the Hokage. Ah. Hanata-san, what can I do for you? She asked. Ayano, um I W was wondering I if Naruto K-kun had a mission tea today. Asked the stuttering girl. 
Well, not that I know of, but if you wait a minute, the hockage will be done with a meeting, and you could ask her. But, why do you want to know? Shizun replied. W. Well, he didn't s shush show up for PR practice today and H. He wasn't at IC Ichirakus, and I already checked H. His O other training grounds. H. He's not anywhere, Hanata said quietly. Just then Sunid exited her office to speak with Shizun. Shizun whispered something in Sunid's ear, and the hockage stiffened slightly. I'm sorry Hanata, but I didn't assign Naruto to any mission today, I don't know where he could be. Sunid replied. As the shy heiress was about to reply a noticeably panting, grey-haired Junin entered the room. Hokage sama we have, a problem. Naruto wasn't at his house or at Ichiraku. His apartment shows signs that something happened, but the landlord wouldn't say. Something needs to be done fast. Kakashi reported, while gasping for air. A look of confusion, panic and terror crossed the faces of all those present. Somehow, Uzumaki Naruto had gone missing. X. At the same time that the Hokage was discussing the disappearance of Naruto, the two members of Akatsuki that were sporting his body returned to the base. Placing his body in the middle of a complex ceiling circle, they began to remove the soul of the Kyuubi from Naruto's body. Four forms raced towards the apartment building that was home to Uzumaki Naruto. The Godaim Hokage, Sunad, Hitaki Kakashi, Shizun, and Hyuga Hanata were running as fast as was possible to investigate Kakashi's claim that Naruto had been or was missing. As they ran over rooftops, they felt a large spike in chakra and K-intent coming from the direction of the building. Pushing more chakra into their legs, the four increased their speed towards the building. Z. Sasuke had been in a good mood. He had re-asked his skills and found them to be much better now, than when he had used the cursed seal. After his training, he had showered and made his way into town, hoping to cross paths with a certain blonde shinobi. He had even gone to the lengths of staking out Naruto's favorite restaurant just in case the loudmouth had gone for food. But after a few hours, it seemed that Naruto wasn't coming to Ichirakus. He had seen both Hanata and Kakashi pass by, and had overheard Kakashi's conversation with the owner. When he heard that Naruto hadn't shown up that morning, he moved towards the blonde's apartment at a quick pace. He had noticed the door, and saw that it appeared to be burned, or charred. Now, the Uchiha clan is known for their mastery of all types of Katen jutsus, and Sasuke could attest that the burning was definitely not any type of jutsu he knew. He was leaving the building when he walked past a door three doors down from Naruto's and heard an old voice talking happily to someone. Sarai asked, M if they were going to K the bastard, and they says yeah. So I just let, M go on their way. I don't know why anyone would miss the son of A.B., but a shinobi came by this morning looking for the demon. I told, him that I, hadn't seen him and he left. When Sasuke heard this, he flew off the proverbial handlebars. He kicked down the door, finding the old landlord talking with an equally old man, sharing some sake. Sasuke had his Sharingan active, looking very foreboding with shadows from the door frame obscuring his face. Instinctively Chakra began to flow to his right hand, and condensed until it became the Chidori. He quickly moved forward and deftly grabbed the old man by his shirt and lifted him into the air. Where is he? Sasuke yelled. Where is Naruto? Just then, the group of four arrived to find Sasuke threatening the life of the old landlord. Kakashi quickly moved forward to stop Sasuke from breaking the terms of his probation. Uchiha Sasuke, put the man down now instructed Sunad. Hokage Sama, he let someone leave with Naruto. Sasuke argued, his eyes still fixed on the now shaking man in his grasp. What? Everyone yelled, this included the usually reserved Hanata. Shizun turned and looked at the shy girl with a questioning look, but diverted her attention back to the quaking form that was Naruto's landlord. I heard him talking about letting someone take Naruto and he just let them leave. Sasuke yelled. The only thing that was keeping him from plunging the Chidori in his hand into the old man's neck was Kakashi's arm on his elbow. Kakashi, take him to Ibiki, I want to know exactly what happened to Naruto, fast. Sasuke, everyone else, come with me. Sunad directed. X. After the group returned to Sunad's office, they had to wait for Ibiki's report. However, that didn't stop the Hokage from questioning the last surviving Uchiha. Sasuke, what exactly lead you to believe that he let people a Naruto? She questioned, trying to contain her temper at the situation. 
Sasuke was trying to calm down enough to answer her. When he regained his composure, he looked right at Hanata and said, I'm sorry Hokage Sama, but I don't think Naruto would appreciate me telling, you see it involves his, secret. What the QB? Asked Hanata in a semi-hysterical manner. You know, Sasuke asked. Yes, Sasuke, she know, but what did you hear? Sunad asked. He said that he let someone leave with that, bastard, and that no one would miss the, demon. Sasuke said, seeding. At this point, Sunad, Shizun, and Hanata were about to go give the old man a piece of their mind for harming their little brother, or boyfriend, respectively. But, lo, a savoir by the name of Kakashi came bearing his report. Sunad Sama, what Sasuke said was true, the landlord allowed two ninja to walk off the property with an unconscious Naruto last night around midnight. S. exclaimed the blonde Hokage. Shizun, get the ANBU, tell them to search for Naruto. I'm sorry Hokage Sama, but there is more. It would seem that these two are members of Akatsuki. Kakashi interrupted. At this everyone, save Sasuke's face paled. What does my brother's old organization have to do with Naruto? Inquired the black-haired genius. The Akatsuki are after the nine biju or tailed demons. Soon it explained. Shizun, scratch the ANBU, we're going after him ourselves. I want Nara Shikamaru here in ten minutes, and I also want Guy, plus anyone else you can convince. I'm bringing my little brother back, if it came me. Shizun went to gather Shikamaru, and Kakashi left in a puff of smoke to fetch Guy. Sasuke, I'm revoking your suspension to help us in our retrieval. We are going to need all the help we can get. Sasuke nodded, and was about to leave to gather his equipment when Hanata spoke up. Hokage Sama, I'm going as well. She said in an unwavering voice. Hanata, I'm afraid that I can't allow that, due to your, condition. The Hokage delicately said. Hanata was about to yell that she didn't care, and would gladly risk the nibi, for Naruto, but was interrupted prematurely by a bird with a message attached to its leg. Suna took the message and read it, eyes growing larger with every word she read. When she finished she addressed the two remaining chunin. Hanata scratched that order, you and Sasuke have four minutes to gather all of your equipment and be back here. I would seem that the Kazekage has done something rather rash. The two just nodded in acknowledgement and left in a burst of speed out the window. X. Exactly four minutes after the two teenagers left, they returned, extremely winded and gasping for breath. As they were recuperating, Shizun entered with Shikamaru and Shino, who had apparently been playing shoggy with the lazy genius. They were only waiting for Kakashi to return with Guy, all parties that knew of the urgency of the situation hoped for once that Kakashi wouldn't be two hours late. Thankfully all fears were s when the grey-haired Junin arrived with Guy, Rock Lee, and Jiraiya in tow. All right, now that everyone is here, I have some really s news. Soon it began. Last night, Uzumaki Naruto was by the organization Akatsuki around midnight. Thanks to a treasonous old bastard of a landlord, they were allowed to walk away with Naruto and no one was aware of anything until around noon today. That means that he's been missing for a little over 12 hours. Right now, we have no clue with the Akatsuki's bases, however, the Kazekage was attacked a number of weeks ago by the same organization, and was able to defeat his opponent and as of now, are searching for the base themselves. We will meet up with the Kazekage and his siblings in a few days to find and destroy the base. Shikamaru, I want you to draw up traveling plans for everyone in this room and anyone else you may need, as well as battle plans for fighting 5S class missing nins at least two of which are capable of defeating a cage in battle. Hi, Hokage Sama, it would help my planning if I knew of the abilities of the members of this group, do we have any information on them? Asked Shikamaru, in a voice that showed that his laziness had abandoned him for now. Unfortunately, most of the information we have is on two specific members, who are now deceased. We do know however, that there are two grass nin, one cloud nin, at least one stone nin, Sasori of the Red Sand, and the leader, of whom we know nothing. I am going to need this ready by sunset, because that is when we are leaving. If you need anyone else, let us know and we will find them. Replied Sunad. X. True to her word, the group of nine shinobi were speeding through the forest bordering the village in an attempt to rendezvous with the Suna group by noon of the next day. They ran far into the night before they took their first break. The formation was a quite efficient diamond pattern with Guy in front, 
flanked by Shino and Lee. Behind those two were Jiraiya to the left, Shikamaru in the middle, and Kakashi to the right. Behind the middle of the group was Sasuke on the left and Tsunade on the right followed by Hanata. The reasoning for this was explained by Shikamaru earlier. Okay, here's the moving formation. It'll be a diamond shape since we want to be able to defend ourselves, and search for Naruto. Guy will be the first person, he has both the skill and speed to detect traps, or ambushes. Behind him will be Shino and Lee. Shino will be able to scout using his bugs, without breaking formation keeping the defense of the group higher, while Lee has the speed to escape, should something, unforeseen come up. The next line will be Jiraiya and Kakashi on either side of me. That way I can see what is happening, and Jiraiya and Kakashi can cause major damage should we get caught in a trap. Behind the middle line, is Hokage Sama, and the Uchiha. Hokage Sama can deal with any W that way, and the Uchiha can act as kind of a bodyguard. Hanata, with your Byakugan you'll be the rear guard as well as medical backup. The mood was tense as the group took turns standing watch and sleeping. It seemed as if something was missing from the group. Shikamaru had the nagging feeling that he was forgetting something. Like there was a hole, and it needed to be filled, but there wasn't anyone who could do what he wanted. The Junins as well had the feeling. Guy even forgot to be insulted by Kakashi's, Hipachu, when he blew the green-clad Taijutsu master off. Sunad and Jiraiya were worried over the blonde boy who had worked his way into both of their hearts, while Hanata took the news of Naruto's predicament the worst. No one could tell, but Hanata was actually not in control of her own body at the time. The Nibi was controlling her body, since Hanata had gone into shock upon hearing that Naruto had been captured by the Akatsuki. Eventually everyone drifted into an uneasy sleep, permeated by nightmare scenarios of the QB's rebirth or escape. X. The next day found the group traveling at breakneck speeds once more, in an effort to shorten the distance between them and Naruto's attackers. They had been moving since daybreak on a light breakfast, adrenaline, and soldier pills. Around 11 o'clock they had slowed down for a quick lunch. It was imperative for them to be well nourished because when they found the location of the base, they would be fighting immediately. Just as they finished, they felt a humongous spike in chakra, about half a mile from the current position. The only one who recognized it was Sasuke. TTH that's Gara's chakra. Sasuke stammered. The group doubled its speed and caught up to the enraged Kazekage in a matter of minutes. When they arrived, they found the Suna siblings fighting around the entrance of a dank-looking cave. Outside were three of the members of the Akatsuki. The two grass shinobi, and one stone ninja were outside fighting Gara, whose sand was circling the three. As the group came close enough to help the Kazekage and his siblings, Gara succeeded in catching one of the grass ninja in his sand. Sabaku Q. Desert Graveyard, stated Gara calmly. He then closed his outstretched hand compressing the cocoon of sand. Sabaku Sausu. Desert Funeral. As the grass ninja seeped through the sand, Shino was able to sneak up behind the other grass ninja. This one had a high collar around his cloak, which made him resemble a Venus flytrap, or a lion ant. This was but part of this ninja's interesting markings. His face has half black and half white, the dividing line, being vertically down the middle of his face. Shino sent some of his chakra-eating bugs at the awkwardly clothed ninja. Surprisingly, the ninja simply laughed at the young Abarame's attempt. Foolish child, your attack won't work. I can freely move my chakra though the flora in my surroundings. Your bugs will never be able to deprive me. I know that you don't have any other kinds of insects residing in your body, so you can't win. Now D. The missing nin attacked Shino with impressive speed, and before anyone could help the young bug user, the attacking ninja had turned his right arm into a club with sharp thorns protruding from it. He landed a crushing blow to Shino's head, eliciting gasps of shock from the remaining Kanoa and Suna Shinobi, only for Shino to turn into a section of tree branch, as part of a replacement technique. Shino reappeared in the midst of the group and giving a nod to Sasuke, resumed his place in the defensive arrangement. Sasuke jumped into the fight with the grass ninja who was named Zetsu. Completing a familiar set of hand seals, Sasuke breathed in deeply before exhaling a gigantic fireball. Katen, Gukaku no Jutsu. Fire skill, Grand Fireball. As Sasuke engulfed the older shinobi in fire, he watched as the form inside simply disappeared. No one knew where the mysterious nin disappeared to, but they were all waiting for him to reveal himself. 
the fine hairs on the back of Sasuke's neck began to prickle as a sense of deja vu overtook him. Realization hit the young Uchiha and he quickly leapt backwards away from his previous position, as his multicolored opponent exploded out of the ground. Doten, Shinju Zanshu no Jutsu, Earth Skill, Inner Decapitation, Sasuke thought, while preparing for his next attack. However, as he was about to attack with another Katen Jutsu, Zetsu, Shikamaru used the shock of the remaining Akatsuki member to capture the Iwa Kunoiki in his Kijmain no Jutsu, Shadow Bind technique. Gara made quick work of the imprisoned women, and the now 12-person team entered the dark cave that was the home of the Akatsuki. X. As the nine-leaf shinobi, plus three, entered the cave, they quickly became entrapped in a maze of twisting, turning hallways. It had been just over three hours, and still, the group hadn't encountered any resistance or any signs of life, just stalaces that provided a conduit for slowly dripping water. Time seemed to creep by as the 12-person rescue team marched onward towards an inevitable confrontation. After another four hours or so, although it seemed much longer, since there was no light to give an indication of time, the group stopped for an uneasy dinner. It was during this time that Shikamaru adopted his now infamous thinking position. Kazekage Sama, asked the lazy genius, what can you tell me about one of your Nukunan, more specifically, Sasori of the Red Sand? What? screamed Kankuro in surprise. Akasuna no Sasori is one of our opponents. From the information we have, yes, he is one of the remaining members. Replied Shikamaru. Why are you surprised is he infamous or something? You could say that. Huffed Kankuro. Sasori of the Red Sand is famous for being the greatest puppet master of all time. He even created the puppets I use. I also heard that he may have had a hand in the death of the Sandime Kazekage. Can you tell me anything about him, or his abilities? Asked Shikamaru, becoming slightly annoyed that another one of his battle strategies was useless, if he created the puppets that Kankuro used, then no doubt, he would know about the weapons hidden in them. Kankuro couldn't fight Sasori. From what I know, he's a master of L as well as puppets. I have heard that his grandmother, who is also a famous puppeteer, had a technique that could topple a castle, and that Sasori improved it too, so that he could topple entire villages. Other than that, I don't know too much, stated Kankuro, raking his brains for the information. With that, Shikamaru resumed his previous pondering, as the others in the group continued eating, and preparing themselves. After a few minutes, Shikamaru's eyes popped open. All right, in order for us to have the best chances of survival, we're going to split up once we meet up with anybody. Hokage Sama will go after Sasori, since he is well versed in L, and we might need her healing abilities. Likewise, Kazekage Sama, you should go after him as well. He is one of your missing nins. Since he is probably the stronger of the two opponents, Kakashi and Guy, you go with Hokage Sama. Shino, your bugs are the best to attack a puppeteer with an Uchiha, you can help I guess. That leaves Kankuro, Temari, Panata, Lee, Jiraiya-sama and I to take care of the Cloud Nin. When either group is finished, we should regroup. If for any reason, the leader decides to come out themselves, Jiraiya, Hokage-sama, and Kazekage-sama should focus on him, her. After that, we move on towards Naruto. Everyone resumed the trek farther into the cave with a new determination. X. Once again the group was forced to stop for rest. They had been running through cavernous hallways for at least 12 hours now, and if Sasuke, Hanata, and Kakashi hadn't checked at least six times, everyone would have sworn they were stuck in a genjutsu. They decided that it made no sense to continue on and fact two deadly missing nins without sleep, so they camped down in the cave for a few hours. Not to mention the eerie fact that the torches that were spread throughout the passageway, had suddenly gone out, leaving them in the dark, literally and figuratively. Shikamaru, may I have a word with you? Asked Sunad, while the group was resting. Alone. The tone of her voice made it obvious that she was unhappy with some decision he had made. I wanted to know, why you made Hanata face the Cloud Nin, you know her history with that village. Hi, Hokage Sama, but in all honesty, the Byakugan and Yukon can't help fight against wooden puppets. I didn't want her to fight a Kumo Nin, given that they attempted to K her and she might react negatively to that, but since Wood doesn't have Tenkatsu to close, Shikamaru stopped speaking, having made his point. All right, I can see that, but why don't you help us with Sasori, I'm sure Sasuke or Guy would handle the other guy easily, right? She asked. 
At this Shikamaru adopted a serious attitude and chose his words carefully. First off, since your group has two Junin and two cages there shouldn't be any trouble, and secondly, if he really does have a technique that can destroy a town, then it probably involves multiple puppets and Kijmane can only hold so much. The lazy teenager replied. Having finished her questioning, Sunid returned to her position in the group, leaving Shikamaru to his thoughts. X. When the group woke up, they quickly packed up their small, camp, and checked their supplies before once again, running through the dark passage, and after an hour, arrived at a large cavernous opening. It was very dark, and there were only one or two torches in the entire cavern, which was very large. They both seemed to frame a small wooden door. To get to that door, you'll have to get past me first. A voice rang out in the cavern, the echoes distorting its origin. The twelve intruding ninjas froze at the sound of the voice. Well, to be truthful, nine out of the twelve froze, Sunud, Jiraiya, and Gara continued on, and if anything got in their way, then whatever it was would be, slowly and painfully. When the trio didn't head the voice's warnings, a large bolt of electricity struck the ground in front of the advancing ninja. Well, I guess that answers one question. Shikamaru replied lazily, although internally, he was crunching many different attack strategies and patterns. Recognizing the attack as one commonly used by Kumo ninjas, the group assigned to hunt Sasori quickly broke away from the other six ninja. After failing to sense any other chakra signatures, Sunid's group ran towards the door. Fools, the invisible foe muttered under his breath. As he prepared another rate in Jutsu to attack the, fleeing, ninja, his attack was deflected by a bunch of kunai and shuriken, thrown by the toad Sanan, Li, and Shikamaru. Once the six members of the other squad were through the tunnel, Sunid created a small cave in with her strength, sealing off the rest of the Kanoa Nin. Damn, with just those two torches, I don't have that much shadow to work with. Thought Shikamaru. Suddenly the figure of their opponent appeared over by the pile of fallen rock, inspecting it. No sooner than the figure, touched the ground, than Shikamaru formed a familiar seal, stretching his shadow towards the Akitsuki member. Just as his shadow was about to bind the ninja, the figure disappeared and the pair of torches extinguished themselves. S. Thought Shikamaru, now I don't have any light to work with, I guess I'll have to make some, but I don't know any Katenjutsu. Since there was no light, this left Lee and the two sand siblings at a disadvantage as well. Temari could simply pepper the area with gusts from her fan, but it would consume a lot of chakra. Kankuro wasn't much help, since his puppets were directed by him and he could see, or sense chakra signatures, other than general directions. Hanata and Jiraiya, however, could either see or feel the presence of the ninja. They both took up defensive positions in the group, ready to counter whatever the ninja might do. Hum, the San and Jiraiya, Anara, the siblings of Shukaku's vessel, and, what's this? A Huga. Interesting. I wonder, a voice rang out through the darkness, seemingly from all directions. With four-sixths of the group unable to pinpoint the location of their adversary, the group could only jump out of the way, as a kunai, tagged with an exploding note was hurled into the center of the circle. The explosion lit up the cavernous area that the S was engaging the Akitsuki member, for just enough time that they were able to check out the terrain. And for the missing nin to make a haunting remark. Short, dark hair, and a pair of Byakugan eyes. It seems that I may yet be able to strike at the Huga clan, even after these twelve years. Hanata's eyes widened, and she began to shake. Hanata, who had been in a state of shock since Naruto's A, finally asserted herself, wrestling control of her body away from the Nibi. Why you? She exclaimed, before sinking to her knees upon realizing who their foe was. Before anything could happen, Shikamaru, Temari, Kankuro, and Lee rushed to the fallen girl's side, protecting her from any attack that may come. Temari placed her hand on Hanata's shoulders and tried to talk with the shaking girl. Hanata-san, what's wrong? She asked. Tth that M Ma man was the one who tried to K me, wh when I was T3. The shy girl replied. Then in a loud voice, she screamed at the top of her lungs, I will K you for what you have caused my family to go through. In a rush of white chakra, the once shy and quiet girl, activated her bloodline limit and charged her past and present tormentor. The man was very quick, and he dodged her early Yukon strikes. However, after only a few seconds, Jiraiya joined the battle, and made the man's task of dodging an enraged Hanata's attacks, that much harder. 
Just as she was about to land a severe strike to his heart, he disappeared from her line of sight. I don't know how you're alive, but I can guarantee that it won't be for much longer. She cried, as she moved to attack the man who had once been the head shinobi of Kumogaku. But as she was about to re-engage the ninja, she heard Jirai yell out, Katen, Katen, Ryuka no Jutsu, fire skill, dragon fire technique. The attack caught the missing nin, completely off guard. The dragon incinerated him, only for it to turn into a smoldering rock, the moss on the rock, igniting due to the intense flame it was exposed to. In the faint light that was provided, Jirai watched as the ninja ran at incredible speeds, even surpassing Lee, towards Hanata. Just as he was about to strike her, he suddenly stopped in his tracks. Kijmain no Jutsu, success. Came the voice of Shikamaru. No hurry up and finish this before the stupid rock goes out. Hanata quickly stuck the man with a Yukon strike to the head, while Jirai powered a raising gun into his chest from behind. Hanata was panting from using so much of the Nibi's chakra, but the group was, for the most part, unharmed. The group was about to begin working to clear the debris of Sunid's cave in, when suddenly, an explosion in the ceiling of the cave showered Shikamaru, Temari, Li, and Kankuro with rock. If Kankuro hadn't used his puppets to create a shield for the group, then they certainly would have been crushed. When Hanata and Jiraiya turned around, they noticed that the cloud ninja was standing up, a black substance was healing his eye. That was quite impressive, had I actually been alive, then that would have definitely came me. The man quipped. Not alive, what do you mean? Hanata asked, glaring at the regenerating ninja. He means he's been resurrected by a jutsu, most likely Kuchio's no jutsu, Edo Tensei, summoning technique, underworld resurrection. Jiraiya responded. That means that his soul is attached to the body, probably by a special kunai or physical object. Very good, of course you are the Toad Sanon, so I really shouldn't underestimate you. The ninja chuckled back. Hanata activated her Byakugan to search for the kunai that held the ninja's soul in the body. But she couldn't find anything. She began to pump more chakra into her eyes, searching for anything that wasn't regular. However, the Kumo ninja had no plans to allow her to scan his body. Meanwhile, Hanata kept scanning her opponent for any irregularities of his chakra system. Suddenly she found the answer to her problems. Jiraiya Sama, if you can stop his movements, I think I can destroy the body. She cried, keeping her pale eyes on her target. Jiraiya simply nodded, and performing a number of hand seals, cried out, Dotan, Yomi Numa. Earth skill, swamp of the underworld. The hard rock of the cave quickly became a very large, very deep swamp. The offending cloud ninja was caught by surprise, and quickly became ensnared in the thick muck. Running on top of the summoned swamp, Hanata ran towards the waist deep man, and planted a sharp yukon strike on his chest. But instead of simply forcing Chaka through a tenkatsu, she forced a large amount of Chaka into a strange seal that was placed on her opponent's chest. Ha! Do you really think you can K me with that stupid taijutsu style of yours? The cloud ninja laughed at Hanata's attempt to K him a second time. Yes, was the only reply he received as a sharp pain shot through his chest. Suddenly Hanata was gone, telling Jiraiya to move and help the remainder of the group, who was still trapped under the pile of debris. As she did this, the former cloud nin gave a shout of pain and simply exploded. What did you do? Asked the perverted hermit. I forced a very large amount of chakra through the seal that was keeping his soul rooted to the body. Hanata explained. Once again, she activated her Byakugan and searched the rock pile for signs of her comrades. Finding them trapped, but alive, she began to surgically destroy the piles of rock with well-aimed Yukon strikes, and Jiraiya summoned some toads to help clear out the pile as well. After an hour, the collapsed area was small enough for the four trapped ninja to escape. Now focusing all of their attention to the caved-in tunnel, courtesy of Sunid, the group began to clear out larger piles of rock and earth. Eventually they were able to move ahead, towards the advance group, and Sasori of the Red Sand. The group consisting of Gara, Sunid, Kakashi, Gai, Sasuke and Shino continued to race towards their next opponent while their fellow comrades were fighting the cloud Akatsuki. Sunid's cave in effectively sealed them off from the other group, and in essence, any chance of reinforcements. Finding themselves in a continuation of the corridor that they were traveling earlier, the group raced on, in hopes that they would be able to save Naruto from a certain death. 
After a relatively short amount of time, the group came into another expansive cavern, even larger than the last one. The main difference was that this one was completely barren, and was lighter. The other obvious difference was that it was empty. While the other ninja had broken cover, quickly after the group had entered, this room was completely empty. Guy was in front of the group, his speed would allow him to dodge any trap that was set, and behind him were Kakashi and Sasuke, their Sharingan would allow him to react to any traps or ambushes that may have been set. Just as Guy entered the room, a tail, gleaming with L appeared from his left. The green-clad Taijutsu master dodged the tail, and counter-attacked with a right-footed heel kick. As he disappeared to the group's left, the rest flooded the cavern to watch as the Junin's kick was blocked with the tail. The metal of the weights guy wore clashed against metal blades stored on the tail of what could only be described as a scorpion. There against the wall of a cavern, stood a hunched-over figure, draped in a black coat adorned in red clouds. He had a large tail coming from his back. Upon having his initial attack blocked, Guy quickly rejoined the team, a safe distance away from the figure. Ah, I see that you have Itachi's younger brother with you, which is good, we could ill afford to allow my former partner to obtain a weapon such as the Sharingan. The figure said. Sasuke merely looked at the figure, eyes shifting from onyx black, to a crimson red. Flashing through a series of hand seals, the final Uchiha released a large ball of flame from his mouth, directly at the hunched over figure. It just stood there, as the fireball collided with its body. The group was surprised when the figure emerged from the blaze with no visible damage, save for its cloak. It was a figure, with two arms and legs, unlike a true scorpion, its legs seemed to be normal, as well as its right arm and the left arm seemed to be covered in a weird gauntlet. The tail sprouting from his back seemed to come from the mouth of a face that adorned his back. Just as he appeared from the inferno caused by Sasuke, Gara's sand enveloped the man's arms and legs as well as the tail. Taking this as their cue, Guy, Kakashi and Sasuke attacked the body of their opponent. All of their attacks did little damage however. Shino was about to send out his kick-eye bugs, however the godime, in a fit of rage, ran forward and obliterated the body in one punch. Dust and splintered wood flew into the air, as a black figure emerged from the debris and coolly addressed the group. As expected from Suna the legendary Sanon, however, I will make you pay for damaging my favorite puppet. The man, who could now be identified as Sasori of the Red Sand said. Sasori emerged from a small cloud of smoke still circulating around the cavern, and the group was able to see the true face of their opponent for the first time. The young man standing before them was quite handsome, with blonde hair and light skin. He was wearing the standard cloak and it covered most of his features. Looking over the team of six, Sasori took view of his situation. Hmm, it seems that I have the pleasure of fighting two cages and the legendary copy ninja Kakashi. I think I have just the puppet for you. Especially you, Kazekage sama He spoke those words with only mild interest in his voice, however the inflection in his voice at the end when he mentioned Gara was indication that whatever puppet he had, they wouldn't like it. Removing a scroll, Sasori used it to summon a puppet in the shape of a man with black hair wearing a black shaggy coat. Only two people recognized this puppet. It was the Sandime Kazekage, said to be the strongest of the five leaders. Since I don't have time to waste on the likes of you, I must make this quick. I hope you'll all go to your deaths knowing what fine puppets you all will make. The puppet master said with a hint of excitement in his voice. A black cloud began to emerge from the puppet of the Sandime, and began to form itself into a large block. What is that? asked Sunad, directing her question at Gara. That is Satatsu, Iron Sand. It is the Sandime's own creation. He was able to control the magnetic forces, and created this jutsu after a previous host of Shukakus. You will not be able to copy it. He stated, rather calmly, directing the last part of his statement at Sasuke and Kakashi. With a flick of his wrist, Sasori had the puppet propel the block of small metal particles at the group. They all scattered, with the exception of Gara. He simply stood where he was, and waited for the block to reach him. There was a loud explosion as the block hit the ground, hiding Gara from the view of the fighters. As the dust settled, there stood Gara, hands still crossed over his chest, with sand swirling around him like a swarm of bees buzzes around its hive. As long as there is sand in the attack, Shukaku can control it. It doesn't matter if it is the third signature attack. He stated, directing his retort as Sasori, 
who had a look of annoyance written on his face. Gara quickly sent his sand towards the puppet in an attempt to crush it. Sasori flicked his wrist again, but the puppet didn't respond to his actions. As the sand enveloped the puppet and crushed its mechanical parts, Gara gave a nod towards Shino for helping to sever the chakra strings. It seems that I have underestimated you, replied Sasori. Although, I doubt very much that what I am about to do is necessary, I must accomplish my goals at all costs. A.K.A. Higgy, Hayaki no Soen. Red Secret Technique, Performance of a Hundred Puppets. Sasori took off his cloak, revealing that he had turned himself into a puppet, revealing a chakra string spinner. He then removed a scroll from his back and tossed it into the air. Suddenly 100 puppets, all once living, breathing people came to life, to serve Sasori. Quickly, the six allied shinobis went to work on the puppets, Shino used his kikai bugs to severe chakra strings, and Guy, crushed the defenseless puppets before Sasori could reattach his strings. Sasuke and Kakashi, were both using Katen, Hausenka no Jutsu, fire skill, mythical fire flower, to shoot multiple balls of fire at the puppets, thinning the ranks at a quick pace. Meanwhile, Gara and Sunid both engaged the puppets that were guarding their puppeteer, making short work of them. As they moved towards the young man, more puppets were called from the fray to guard their master, but Kakashi used his own version of the Mangekyo Sharingan to send those puppets to another dimension. With their backs clear, Sunid was able to land a chakra-laden punch to Sasori's stomach, sending him into the air, where Gara's sand caught him, before crushing the puppeteer. Upon seeing their foe's death, the other shinobi caught their breath, and attempted to replenish their chakra. Suddenly, a sword flew through the air at Sunit, L gleaming of the blade, thrown from a puppet that shouldn't be moving about. The move was very sudden, and had Gara's sand not caught it, the fifth hockage would have been L and of little help in the continuing fight. It's useless to try and K me, I can take control over any of my puppets at any time, you will never find me, so you can't K me. Sasori exclaimed from the puppet he was controlling. This time, he took the offensive, revealing L blades from his new arms, and attacking the chakra depleted Kakashi. However, before he could reach the panting grey-haired Junin, a wall of sand emerged in front of the attacking puppeteer, blocking his path. It was at this time that Shino's observant eyes, hidden behind his sunglasses, noticed the only similarity between the old Sasori and the new one. Hokage Sama, that talisman over his heart, it must be what allows him to create chakra. If you destroy it, you may be able to K Sasori. The young bug wielder pointed out. The message was delivered quietly, so that their opponent didn't figure out that they knew his weakness. Armed with the new information, Sunid and Gara re-engaged Sasori. Gara was able to grab a hold of Sasori's legs, and used his sand to immobilize the joints. Sunid then ran forward and delivered another crushing blow, this time to the talisman, which suddenly popped out of the puppet, where it was caught in a ball of fire, courtesy of Kakashi. Just as Sasori's human remains were smoldering out of existence, the other six shinobi were able to catch up to Sunid and Gara's group. Before they moved on, Sunid and Hanata treated all the W that were incurred during the fighting. The most damage was some bruising on the four ninja that were caught in the cave in caused by the cloud ninja. Other than that no one had any remarkable eye, and after handing out soldier pills, the twelve moved on down a hallway that seemed to have a light down a long tunnel. As the group ran towards the light, they were all worried that if they were late, their efforts would be for naught. Sunad and Sasuke were worried that they would lose their brother, Kakashi was afraid that one of his first students would be, like his old teammates did, and Hanata was the most worried of them all. If she lost Naruto, she didn't know what she would do. Quickly taking the lead, Sunad ran forward at a pace that was matched only by the two demon vessels, and Maito Gai. When they reached the door, they didn't even slow down, as Sunid pulled her arm back and shattered the door with one swing of her arm. At first the light was too intense for the twelve rescuers, due to their virtual seclusion into darkness, and they were forced to revert their eyes. However, the sound of battle rang out and reached their ears. As their vision cleared, they saw the object of their search fighting Orokimaru. Kabuto's body was laying on the ground, as well as the body of a man wearing black robes, who had spiky black hair. Both Kabuto's eyes and the eyes of the Akatsuki member were glazed over in death. The sound of steel clashing with steel brought the spectators back to reality. They watched as Naruto fought on par with the legendary snake Sanon. 
Well brat, it seems that we've gotten a bit of a crowd. I think I'll finish you with the technique that did Sarutobi Sensei in. Orokimaru chuckled. Kuchio's no jutsu, Edo Tensei, and pure world resurrection. Out of the ground sprang four coffins, with the kanji for one, two, three, and four emblazoned on the front. Naruto simply stood there, watching as the coffins of the former Hokages of Kanoa rose up before him. Nice try, you bastard, the blonde said in a serious voice. Too bad it won't work this time. You see, those two, he points at the caskets of the Shodaim and Nadaim, were sealed into cage bunchons of the old man, so they can't be resurrected, their souls are in the stomach of the Shinigami. True to his word, when the first two caskets creaked open, the now the third, since he summoned the god of death, that means his soul was eaten as well, so he can't be resurrected. As with the previous two coffins, the one bearing the insignia of the third hockage opened and a sacrificial body fell out. And that one, the blonde pointed to the casket of the most feared hockage in the history of Kanoa. That one, is mine. The coffin opened, and out fell another body, devoid of any signs of life. Now that you've wasted as much chakra as you have, I think I'll K you now. The blonde said emotionlessly. He charged forward as an incredible speed and used Shunshin to appear right in front of Orokimaru. As the blonde separated from the snake, the twelve onlookers were in awe. Not only had Naruto severely damaged a Sanon, but he had done it while he was blocked. As the two stared each other down, Jiraiya was rummaging through one of the bags he had hidden on his person. Finding what he was looking for, the toad hermit threw a strange-looking object at the teenager, with only a warning of, catch. The blonde caught the object in his left hand, and upon looking at it, his face lit up in a smile. Thanks, Jiraiya Sensei. He cried out before hurling an oddly shaped, three-pronged kunai at the snake Sanon's head. Orokimaru simply turned his head to the right and the missile flew harmlessly past. My my, that was a waste of my comrade's gift. The pale man chuckled. You wish, bastard. The blonde replied, chakra spinning in his hand. Here's a new attack for you Raisingan. Suddenly the blonde disappeared, and reappeared behind the legendary Sanon, who was now sporting a large hole in his chest. As Orokimaru D, the remaining ninja could only stare at the once, D last, who had just K the legendary Orokimaru. As he turned around, the group could see for the first time that something was wrong with Naruto. The whisker marks on his cheeks were gone. En Naruto, Sunid stuttered as she tried to make coherent speech. I'm sorry, Sunid, but Naruto isn't in at the moment. The blonde responded. Who are you then? She asked. Why you're in not the KKQB, are you? No, the bastard fox is inside this ugly sculpture that's supposed to pass as a medium for the souls of the Biju. He replied. Right now, it's just me. He responded. Anno, if you're not Naruto-kun, then who are you? Demanded Hanata from the back of the group. Ah, that's a good question, my name is Kazama Arashi, and I am the fourth Hokage. The blonde said, smiling. X. That will be all for this video, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos, goodbye.